I was born in Jacksonville, Florida, and I've lived here all my life. Being honest, this city seems so normal. Nothing was weird or anything. I wasn't even born in the city, I was born in the suburb. It didn't matter. I was and I still am a huge Jax fan. Sadly, we're one of the worst teams ever and we've never won a Super Bowl. Even then, I still go to Jags games and hope that they win. However, even with all this, there's one game that I never want to talk about. I still remember watching on television and thinking, could this team get any worse? It was a rushing touchdown by Derrick Henry. As every NFL fan knows, Derrick Henry is an absolute menace and an absolute beast. What's funny is before this play, the Jaguars scored a safety. Only 14 games in the entire 256 game NFL season have a safety occur. Anyway, back to the run. At the 20 yard line of the run, he managed to stiff arm and basically bulldoze AJ Boye. A few seconds later from the 5th to the 35 yard line, Derrick Henry basically suplexed Leon Jacobs. It was amazing. After that, he was gone. No one was able to stop him. The irony is that the kicker Ryan Sukop missed the extra point wide left. Even with that slip up, Derrick Henry is still one of the greatest running backs of all time. Even though this run was amazing, it is actually the second longest rushing touchdown. The first 99 yard rushing touchdown belongs to Tornado Set. Before this play occurred, the saddest kickoff return happened, but I wouldn't even call it the kick return. The ball went down the line and then proceeded to bounce off the hands of the Cowboys kick returner. The ball decided to say F you by proceeding to bounce out of bounds at the one yard line. Anyway, after this, the Cowboys are on the one yard line. They do a rush and it's supposed to end horribly, but instead it leads to a 99 yard rushing touchdown for Donnie Dorsett. Tony Dorsett had achieved the first ever 99 yard rushing touchdown and embarrassed the Vikings defense. It was an incredible achievement and Tony Dorsett will live on as one of the greatest football players of all time. The legacy of a 90 yard rushing touchdown is pretty basic. Every player who's made a 90 yard rushing touchdown or longer is shown here. What's funny is while making this chart I found out that OJ Simpson appears twice. A long rushing touchdown isn't too rare, many players have made rushing touchdowns longer than 90 yards, but no player has ever made it to Tony in Derek's universe. However, we're not going to only talk about the longest rushing touchdowns, we're going to have to go further into the stupidity of the NFL. This video is about really, really long touchdowns, so let's not waste any time. In 1939, the Washington Redskins and Pittsburgh Pirates played in Griffith Stadium, which was originally a baseball stadium. Frank Filchok was the quarterback and Andy Farkas was the receiver. Frank Filchok's throwing yards throughout his career were okay, but were very inconsistent. However, the amount of yards he threw in this one pass counted for nearly 9% of the total passing yards he had that season. Sadly, there is no footage of this, but this is the earliest touchdown to be 99 yards or more. Seventy years later, the Giants and Jets are playing in MetLife Stadium. The build-up to this play is tantalizingly beautiful, if that even is a word. The Jets have to punt, but right before the punt sails into the end zone for a touchback, number 26 Ellis Langster dives in and scoops the ball out. The ball goes to the 5-yard line before being downed, except it wasn't downed. Chase Blackburn decided to dive in there and grab the ball. It ended up counting as an illegal touch leading to a 5 yard penalty. The Giants were then sitting on the 1 yard line. At the time, the Giants quarterback is Eli Manning. Even though he's one of the best quarterbacks, he has no idea what is about to happen. Eli Manning is probably feeding himself thinking he's screwed. He throws to the left and it gets blocked. The second throw goes far out of bounds. The Giants are now on 3rd and 10 and it's looking grim. On the third throw, a Giants player is being surrounded by two Jets defenders. This player is none other than Victor Cruz. Victor is a great wide receiver, but catching a ball with two guys on you is kind of a big order to fill. The ball is thrown to Victor, and Victor does what Victor always does.
Manning on third and ten. He fires, and the catch is made by Cruz, who breaks free. One man to beat. Victor Cruz down the sideline. Cruz is going to take it all the way, tying it at a... This one play was so incredible that it nearly counted for half of Eli Manning's passing yards that entire game. And for Victor, it counted for more than half of his receiving yards that game. The yardage would be even longer if the NFL actually counted the yards inside the end zone, but it doesn't matter. This is one of the greatest touchdowns ever, and it was the precursor to the Giants winning the Super Bowl later that season. Here is every NFL kick returner with two or more return touchdowns in their career. Most have two or three, but some people have way more. At the very top of this list are three players with eight kickoff return touchdowns, two more than the last. The first is Josh Cribbs, who played for the Browns during his longest kick return. The second is Cordell Patterson, who played for the Vikings. And the third is Leon Washington, who played for the Seattle Seahawks. All these names have committed incredible touchdowns, all shown here. Some of these stretch from long to very, very long. The skill that goes into returning kicks involving speed, agility, and focus for the entire thing is really hard to keep up. It's really impressive to see people be this consistent with kickoff returns. However, the one I want to talk about is a 109 yard run from Cordell Patterson. To understand this run, we don't need to know too much. It's a simple case of pure domination. It was October 27, 2013, and the Vikings and Packers are going at it. Cordell Patterson caught the ball at the edge of the end zone, and in a span of 14 seconds, absolutely demolished the Packers' defense and scored a touchdown. It is one of the greatest TD runs I've ever seen in years. It's like he's butter, and he just slips through everyone like nothing. Cordero Patterson is one of the few football players to reinvent the position and use his skill to destroy the competition. Only 0.27% of kickoffs are even returned for touchdowns, which makes this play all the more impressive. It really shows how incredible these players are. The NFL punt return touchdown leaders chart is kind of amazing. Everyone here has a basic amount, but the guy at the top has an exponential lead of 14 punt return touchdowns. Devin Hester was an incredible special teams player, but he's not the one we're going to talk about. Here is the same chart, but based off the amount of punt returns they had in their career. The average is about 250 games and 6 return touchdowns. It would make sense that the more you had means you would have more touchdowns, but this isn't always the case. Devin Hester has only 315 punt returns, while Brian Mitchell, with 9 touchdowns, has 463. This chart is pretty obvious, and it makes sense. The NFL punt returners have a lot of punt returns, and they most likely have lots of touchdowns. But the sports world never wants normality. It wants to show that anyone can do anything, even if it's a freak accident.